Hey everyone, it's Jordan from JJ Media House, and today I'm bringing you my top 10 games of 2015. So this is my personal list of games that I played. I didn't get to play every single game, but you now here it is. Oh, and uh, it's from least favorite game to most enjoyed, most favorite, however you want to put it. So here we go, enjoy. For number 10, we have Metal Gear Solid 5, and it is really high up on the list for many reasons. It's not a bad game by any means, or anything like that but um i mean you know the gameplay is great the graphics are great good mechanics fun open world tons of stuff to do very unique game and uh very innovative and you know you sh really shouldn't expect anything less from kojima um there's a couple reasons it is really high up here though and um i'll get into one of them the next game so but just for this specifically the reason it's number 10 is because of the story. Now, anyone who's played Metal Gear Solid knows that story is a huge, huge deal to the Metal Gear Solid series, and it just really isn't here. And it's told through tapes, and just for that simple reason, it's hard for me to consider it a good Metal Gear game, but as a game on its own, completely just by gameplay, it's really good. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> So at number 9 we have Fallout 4. Now all of you should know what this game is and everything about it. It is Bethesda's next AAA title and it's amazing. There's nothing else to it. I love everything about this game. I love that they simplified it a bit. Like with Skyrim it's a bit more streamlined, not so like RPG. It's just a first person shooter with RPG elements and honestly I love it. I have no complaints aside from bugs and well it's just a great game. You should know what to expect from Bethesda at this point. I actually, if I guess, if I had to have one complaint, it's not really a complaint, just me being confused to everyone on the internet and a couple close friends of mine is saying that the game's too easy, their playthrough was way too easy, that they had to raise the difficulty. I honestly have no idea what they're talking about because this game has been nothing but a struggle for me. Everywhere I go, I die, like, constantly, all the time, and, you know... It's, it's weird, I would say my death count is about as high as it would be in a Souls game. So if you're curious about why this is at number 9 and Metal Gear Solid 5 is at number 10, why they're so high up on the list and not lower, it's because I'm a bit burnt out from open world. I've been <coughs> sorry, I've been playing every open world game there is to play. I've played all the Far Cry's, all the Assassin's Creed's, all you know, GTA 5 and just tons and tons and I just at this point I'm a little burnt out and I think that's why I didn't enjoy them as much. Open world games are just kind of a turn off to me a little bit now. So I think if it wasn't for that, they would have been much lower on the list, like around one, two, three. M most likely, it's just the fact that they're both open world. So they were kind of like really, really, really hard for me to really get into because of how tired I am of the genre.
At number 8, we have Ollie Ollie 2. This game, I got it for free on PlayStation 4 from PlayStation Plus. I had never played the first one, so I must say it was a really good thing I decided to check out this game because it is it is a ton of fun. It's simple, it's easy, it's fun. Um, I love everything about it. I love the aesthetics, the design of the game, the music is really good. Music's really important to me in a game. Like, really, really important, so that that's a huge plus. The game is just awesome, it's fun, it's challenging. Like, you know, there's little challenges you can do throughout the level, that's really nice. I, I love having goals when I play games. It's just simple, fun, and I would definitely check it out. It's, it's worth your money. At number 7 we have Hotline Miami 2. So this game is violent. It's a top-down gory shooter action game that actually takes a lot of strategy. It can be quite difficult at time or more like all the time. But it's fun and it will challenge you and again, like the last game, the design, music, atmosphere, just everything is awesome and hit right at home for me. I will say though that I think the first game is much better. Although I think that, still, this game is, is pretty great, and I would go and check it out if you haven't already. Now surprisingly at number 6 we have Black Ops 3, and I mean this should be a really big shocker to anyone that knows me or well it's a big shocker to me. Now I'm not really one to be in love with Call of Duty, yes I've played most of them, but I don't consider them amazing games or sometimes even really good games at that. I hate the business model, I hate how they handle things with their business, it's really just the business that ruins it for me in their copy and paste style, but this time around. It's, it's different. I will say that I was impressed with Black Ops 3. No, the story isn't amazing or anything, but it was fun with three of my other friends. This story is for player co-op. If there's one thing Black Ops 3 got right this time around, or just Call of Duty got right this time around, is that it's fun and there's tons and tons of content. I mean, you have the four player campaign and then after you beat that you got the four player co-op zombies campaign and then you have your standard wave based zombies and then you know multiplayer which is always there and all of it is just very fun and that's what this game does right just is fun at number five we have dirty bomb a free to play on steam by the creators of brink and i don't remember the name it's a multiplayer fps that actually relies on teamwork and it's actually really really good i won't get too much into it but it is really fun and probably one of the best free to play models i have ever seen every character and class that is in the game you can get just by playing the game and the grind isn't too terrible i mean the gameplay is great so the grind wouldn't be bad anyways and anything you can get in the game like you can get it through in-game currency which is really cool and anything that you can't get through in-game currency is completely cosmetic so there's no pay to win which is awesome they got this one right at number four we have mortal kombat x which i'm sure all of you are aware of they had a huge 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 marketing uh budget and like there's just tons of marketing anyways um I'll say that it is a really fun game, but I don't like it as much as the last Mortal Kombat, mainly just because of the content in the game. Like, the last one had a ton of stuff, I mean, you had tag team, and multiple game modes, and just, you know, all kinds of stuff, and just a lot more content. The story was also kind of better. Not as cinematic, but it was much more lengthier and was a better story. This one was just a bit weird, but uh, all that aside, 
What really made this one as good as it is, is the gameplay. They got the combat down right. It feels good, it's smooth, it's fun, everything is just right about the gameplay, and that's why it's on this list. If you haven't played this, which I would be surprised, go play it. And at number 3 we have Wolfenstein the Old Blood, so this is just a pretty cool, a cheap one at that to 2014's Wolfenstein the New Order, and I gotta say, it's good. Not as good as the New Order, but only because it's a lot shorter than the New Order. It's definitely just a fun game. I mean, the gameplay is great, best FPS I have played in years. I really suggest you pick this up if you have or haven't played Wolfenstein the New Order. Either way, get it. It's fun and it's cheap, so you might as well. So, number two is Killing Floor 2. This game is intense, it's scary, it's fun, it's it's just awesome, it's just a good time all, all the way around, and um, it really, well what it is is it's a wave-based survival game with six-player co-op, and that's really it, I mean, it's just fun. Every time I play this game, I enjoy myself so much, I love every little thing about this game. The gameplay, the classes, the community, the music, just everything is really Really good. Every time I play, I play it. I really, really enjoy it myself. If you haven't gotten the chance to play it, I suggest you do. But it's only on PC right now. Soon to come to PS4. They said 2015, but mm, I really, really doubt that. Probably 2016. Hopefully early 2016. So before we get to my number one, we're going to do some honorable mentions, and well, my first honorable mention is Tearaway Unfolded. So Tearaway Unfolded is a remake of just Tearaway, which was originally released for the Vita, but the game is filled with so much charm and character, and it's just a fun adventure game to play through. When, with it being on PS4, they actually utilize the PS4's hardware and features, and it, it just makes it makes for a fun adventure. I mean, that's... It, it's different enough from the Vita's version with the DualShock 4, and I don't want to go into details about what they do. Like I said, this game is filled with charm that you should experience for yourself. If you haven't played the original, or have even really, I would s just go check this out. It's a lot of fun. And my second honorable mention is DMC Devil May Cry, the remake definitive edition. So like I said, this is my personal list. I might get a little backlash for this. I know this game isn't very popular. A lot of people didn't like it, mainly because of the redesign of Dante and the characters, the new imagining. But in my personal opinion, you can't, if you're going to remake something, then it should be a remake. And well, this definitely was. And like I said, it's my opinion. It's okay if you disagree. It's fine. But I like the new Dante more. I love the new game just a lot more. It's, it really is just a great game, I mean. And the Definitive Edition comes with all the DLC and improvements to the original game. I don't think it really needed improvements. I thought it was an amazing game, but... So yeah, I mean, it comes with all this stuff, and it really is just fun. And the combat, the style, the music, the oh man, the story, just the game is great. And it, if you haven't played DMC, or you're very biased about it, and you haven't played it, at least give it a shot. Just try it out. It doesn't do any harm. You will most likely at least enjoy the gameplay, because it is very good. Stop me, brother.
And my number one is Bloodborne, so I'm just going to say it now. I am not a fanboy of the Soul series, so you know, don't don't think that because I, I really am not. In fact, the last Souls game I really enjoyed was like Demon Souls, which was the other PlayStation 3 exclusive title. And that was the last one I enjoyed. I personally cannot get into Dark Souls. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just the aesthetics of the world, the way it plays, which doesn't make sense. They all play pretty similar. I just, I can't do it for some reason. But Bloodborne has left a mark in my mind. It has a place in my heart now. <laughs> this game is truly something amazing. It, I mean, the fast paced combat is great. I mean, just discovering everything in the world, just, ah oh man, the design of the world, the gothic design is so good, and this game was just interesting, I mean, I loved unraveling the story by playing the game and just kind of giving, making up my own interpretation of what's really going on, that was really cool. Usually I'm not into these, like, super open up for interpretation things, but this time I really was, and I really loved it, I mean, the game was just interesting, fun. It was really challenging, really hard, it took me a while to beat, and I've beaten it on New Game Plus as well, but I mean, once I came around, I really came around, and I love this game to death, and I know it's not really for everybody, like I said, personal list, it really isn't for everybody, but this is by, I know it's not a part of the Soul series by title, but I mean, it is a spiritual successor, and with that being said, I think it's the best of the series, and if you have a PlayStation 4, it is a must-have. That is my number one game of 2015. So, guys, that is my 2015 list, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I really do. I mean, I enjoyed making the list. I enjoyed playing these games. For the most part, some stressful moments here and there, but I, I mean, I loved it. I mean, I loved this game. But anyways, what I'm trying to say here is, if you like the video, give it a give it a thumbs up all that youtube jazz subscribe that kind of shit if you want to anyways i would also like it if you left a comment let me know what your top 10 top 15 top 40 whatever just you know comment let me know what your favorite games of the years are if i'm just interested to know what my viewers are into and you know i hope you enjoyed the video again have an awesome day and it was a great year for gaming kind of it was kind of hard to come up with this list hopefully 2016 will be a lot better and i will see you guys next time